Hey, good morning, y'all. We are thankful that y'all uh, are tuning in again this morning, another Sunday morning. And again, we just want to uh, ask y'all to participate with us uh, wherever you are, whether you're at home, watching with your family, where, wherever you are, are viewing this at. Would you join with us as we sing, as we pray, as we open the word together? Uh, take part in worship this morning. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for another day. God, we thank you so much for your many blessings. God, we thank you for your, your grace and mercy towards us. And Lord, we just pray, God, that you would bless this time. Lord, that you would stir our hearts towards you, Jesus, by your Spirit's power. God, as we sing praises to you, God, would you draw us near to you this morning. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. scriptures from Psalm 145 verse 1 through 12. I will exalt you my God the King 
I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all that he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithfulness, your faithful people extol you. They tell the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. face no matter what we're going through we know that that God is worthy of all praise because he's a good God he is walking with us through it um, right now we're going to do like we do every week and we're just going to take this time in our service to to bring um, our, our tithes and our offerings and worship the Lord in that way um, and there's a couple of different ways you can do that if you're watching this morning one is is to go online. You can go to our website, tophandcowboychurch.org, and you can click the giving button, and uh, you can give online through PushPay, or you can 
uh, take this time as, as we sing this song, as we pray together, you can take this time to, to write out a check or however you want to do it um, and, and send it in the mail to uh, Top End Cowboy Church, P.O. Box 428, Valley Mills, Texas 76689. And again, just want to encourage you to, to worship the Lord in that way. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that you are our provider. God, that you own it all. God, and you just ask us to be stewards of what you've blessed us with by your grace for, for a time. And so, Lord, as we bring back a portion of all that is yours, God, to honor you, God, would you bless it? God, would you take it? Would you use it? Would you multiply it, God, to further your work through this ministry? God, to take the gospel to the communities around us. God, to help us be your hands and feet. Uh, through this ministry to, to help a lost and hurting world right now. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Or over the storm, see. 
Jesus, help me trust you more and more. Jesus, only Jesus, may my Forty-five, thirteen through 21. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all that he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and give, and you give them food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise to the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Yeah. 
see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I you 
Jesus, we thank you that you are our Savior, that you are our way maker, that you are a miracle worker, God, that you call dead men and women to life through your burial and resurrection. God, we're thankful for the cross, Jesus, where you paid for our sins and you made the ultimate way for us. God, I pray right now as Greg comes to share your word, Lord, would you fill him by your Holy Spirit? Lord, would you just open, uh, open our hearts and our minds to receive what you have for us today? It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. What an, what an awesome worship that we've been experiencing. And I, I pray that you've been lifting up our band in prayer over the last several weeks and uh, it's been such a joy to uh, be able to put all this on and, and come and bring the, the worship to you. And uh, I want to encourage you to keep praying. Uh, we're still asking God to lead us and show us exactly what we need to be doing as a, as a church and as a ministry. And that's why I'm just so glad to be preaching this sermon series, Helping Hands. And uh, we're going to look at the Good Samaritan, the, the parable this morning. And it's really kind of one of my favorite parables that Jesus taught. And it really doesn't have so much to do with the parable. It has to do with the questions at first. But uh, let's start with prayer and we'll get into the message this morning. Father God, I just thank you so much for your many, many blessings in our life. Lord, help us to count them and name them one by one. Father, I pray that you would use this sermon series, that we would learn about our hands and how we can serve you and serve those around us, Father. May we learn from this parable. May we learn from your word today so that we can live a life that, that shows others who you are in our life. Lord, would you just fill us with your grace, your mercy, and your love that we might be poured out into the lives of others. Speak to us and use this time, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are in the Gospel of Luke the 10th chapter, we're going to begin with verse 25 here. It says, On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. When he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. Verse 33. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him, and he bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine, then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, The one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, Go and do likewise. So this morning I want us to look and, and, and think about what it means to use our hands to serve or help those around us. Have you used your hands in this past week? I, I want you to recall maybe something that you've done this week where you actually utilized your hands in the service or to help someone else. And it can be as simple as gathering up all the groceries and carrying them in the house. It can be something as simple as taking a grocery basket that somebody leaves next to a vehicle because that's not where it belongs 
and pushing it back to the rack or even going the second mile and pushing it back up into the store. But I want you to think about your hands, okay? So this week, next week, and in the weeks to come, I want you to know some things about your hands. Do you realize, I, I, I looked this up, so I didn't know this just by knowing it. I had to look it up. There's 34 muscles in our hand to move our fingers and our thumb. There's 17 in the palm of our hand, and there's 18 in our forearm. So it takes quite a few muscles in our forearm, hands, and palm to be able to serve and to utilize them so that we can be pleasing to the Lord in the way that we help our neighbor. Now, as I said, I want us to, to look at the parable of the Good Samaritan, but I think there's so much information before Jesus ever gets to the parable. Verse 27 here is, the expert in the law stood up and asked the teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus replied, well, what is written in the law? And he says, how do you read it? And I think this is great. He knew the right answer. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. So see, this means for you and I, really total devotion. That's what these great commandments are all about. It means that we give our total devotion to the Lord because that's really what it is. Our mind, our heart, our soul, our strength. We are devoted to serving Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So what does total devotion look like in your life? What would it mean if you were totally devoted to serving the Lord? What would that mean when you got up in the morning? How would that look when you are in your family setting at home? What would that look like when you're in a place of work and, and you're around co-workers? What does it mean in the activities that we participate in and that we soon will be back participating in? What does it look like when we are in total devotion to our Lord even at the grocery store? See, I believe there's some lessons in this parable that come even before Jesus shares the parable because he knows, I believe, that, that the expert in the law is trying to stump him. So Jesus simply and calmly, and we ought to learn that, to just be calm and respond when someone asks us a question. And the way that we respond is by having God's Word within us. So that we're not having to come up with something from our own mind, our own thought. But we have the living word living within us so that when we speak, it comes from our heart and we're able to share. But he says this, he says, you have answered correctly. Jesus replied, do this and you will live. So then let's look and see what happens in verse 29. But he wanted to be justified, and, but he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Maybe you're asking yourself that. Well, Brother Greg, who really is my neighbor? I believe our neighbor is the one that we love the way that we love ourselves. You say, well, Greg, I don't know that there's that many people that I love the way I love myself. Well, maybe we need to reevaluate what our relationship to Jesus Christ is. Because this really is a command for you and I, that we are to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. That means if we would go out of the way for ourselves to do something, that we need to be going out of the way for our neighbors to do something for them. It, it, it means if we would get up early to go take a trip, if we would get up early to go fishing, that means that we would get up early to go mow our neighbor's lawn, that we would get up early to go serve them, build a fence. We would get up early to maybe take them to a place that they need to go. So I ask you, who is your neighbor? And I know that during this time that we've been confined, that we've really been secluded and we've been quarantined and all that that means, but, but now that things are opening back up, I want us to think about what has happened within us during this time? 
how has this impacted who we are and who we see Jesus to be in our life? And now what do we do with it? That's why I believe this Helping Hands sermon series is so significant right now. Because as you begin to open up again, go back to the places you've been before, go to new places, my prayer is that you will look at your hands differently so that you will see that with your hands, you can serve those around you. So let's get into the parable. The parable here that Jesus replies and, and says these words. He says, A man went, was going down from Jer Jerusalem to Jericho. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. When he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes. They beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now, I don't know about you, per se, but I, I know for me that as I travel the highways and the county roads and things, if I see somebody that, that needs help, that looks like they're not able to take care of their need on their own, I, I try to pull over. If I see there's a group there that can figure it out, or maybe if somebody's already stopped, you know, I just kind of check in my spirit, Lord, am I supposed to help, or do I just need to go on? But I've been blessed many times by being the only one to, to help somebody. And sometimes they were able to change the tire. They were able to meet their need. But sometimes it's just an opportunity to create fellowship, uh, to show individuals that you're willing to, to help serve them, that you're willing to help them get back on the road. So in this situation, this man is beaten, he's stripped, he's robbed, he's left for half dead. So he's in bad shape. If, if Jesus is using this and, he, and he's half dead, that means he doesn't have, have much to hang on to. And, and so it's very interesting, I believe, that in the parable we have a priest, a Levite, and a Samaritan. Now the priest, it says this. It says on verse 31, A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. Now, I've often wondered in this parable, did this happen where nobody else could see what was going on? I, I, I'm sure that it did because you're not likely to, to beat up an individual and leave them for half dead if you're in view of other people. So my question for the priest is, what was going on within you because of the commandments of our Lord and Savior, because of the written law to, to love your neighbor as yourself, to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. That's the greatest commandment. So if you do those two things, then you are in keeping with the Ten Commandments. So how does the servant of the Lord, a priest, how do you and I, how can we consciously look at somebody that we know is half dead, that we know is struggling in life, that we know that is in the middle of a major crisis, and yet, because we need to get to the grocery store, or we need to get to the ball field, or we need to do something that we want to do, we just pretend like we don't see what's going on. There are things in this world that we can't unsee. And when we see someone in need, that doesn't ever leave us. As a believer in Jesus Christ, we remember those opportunities that Jesus says, here, stop here and help this individual. And I will be the first to confess. There have been times that I have placed my busyness, my schedule above what I, I saw and I heard and I sensed in my spirit that the Lord wanted me to do. And I've had to go back and ask for forgiveness because I've realized now that many times I'm missing a blessing. That individual could be a blessing in my life by me taking the opportunity to use my hands and, and tell them and work with them and share with them what the good news is that Jesus is in my life. So I want us to look at these three individuals. We're going to look at verses 30 through 35 here. So the priest happens to be going down the same road, and he passes by on the other side. So too the Levite comes in verse 32, and when he came to the place and saw him, he went and passed on the other side. Now, now, the definition of a Levite is a teacher and, and possibly a judge even. So this is someone that, has the, that is recognized in the community. This is someone that is seen as a leader. This is someone that's seen 
that should be taking responsibility for their own actions and even the actions of others. And yet, just as the priest chose to go around on the other side, the Levite chooses to go around on the other side. So how many times are we going on the other side of the opportunity that Jesus has placed in front of us? How many opportunities have we missed because of of our selfishness, because of our not wanting to get our hands dirty, because of us not wanting to get involved? Sometimes getting involved can be simply, can I pray with you? Sometimes simply getting involved is, can I hand you this tool? There's been quite a few people that I've stopped to help, and they had everything, but I just wanted to be there as kind of a ministry of presence just to let them know that they're not broke down on the side of the road by themselves, that, that hey, let me get the spare out of, out of the back of the truck or whatever. Do whatever I could. And those people are always grateful that somebody was willing to stop. And even if they did most of the work, you get a handshake, you get a thank you, you can tell that that person appreciates that you stopped. So I want to encourage you, you and I need to stop more often because we're missing the blessings that God has for us. But I believe the Good Samaritan here received the greatest blessing. So let's look and see what what takes place. Verse 33 says, But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. You know, what does it mean to to take pity on somebody? It it means that that you recognize their need. It means that you, you go to comfort them. When we take pity on somebody, it means that we go... And we literally want to put our arm around that individual. I know we're not supposed to do that right now. But in Jesus' name, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to put our arm around that person and we're going to empathize with them. We're going to show compassion to them. We're going to try to understand what's going on with them. And we're going to journey with them. We're going to walk with them for a little while. So then it goes on to say in verse 34, he said, He went to him and bandaged him his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense that you have. So so I want to kind of walk back through this, and, and I want to focus on how many times he had to use his hands to help this individual. So let's go back. But a Samaritan, verse 33, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged him with his hands, his wounds with his hands, pouring oil and wine with his hands. Then he put the man on his own donkey with his hands. He brought him to an inn and took care of him with his hands. Then this is what it says. It says the next day he took two denarii with his hands out of his coin purse, out of his pocket, and gave them to the innkeeper. And he says to the innkeeper, look after him. And when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense that you have had. So the innkeeper receives this individual and then he becomes a part of the story by helping this individual. But the Good Samaritan here shows us in in several steps that he's using his hands. Now, now this individual, this Samaritan, he could have waited for some other people to get there to join in and help. But what he did is he dove in right there. He said, I see a man that that I have pity on, that, that he's nearly half dead. I need to take action. I need to do something. What are the things right now that God's speaking in your life that you need to take action on, that you need to get your hands on, that you need to take a step of faith and say, I need to be involved in that situation because I've heard from the Lord, the Lord has spoken to my heart, and I need to go and do what He's asked me to do. See, I think we get down to verse 37 here in just a second, and we we have a better understanding of this story. So verse 36 here at the end, it says, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of the robbers? This is Jesus speaking. And then verse 37, he says this, The expert in the law replied, The one who had mercy on him. What does it mean to have mercy on someone? It means compassion showed towards someone 
whom it is within one's power to punish or to harm. Now think about this. The, the Samaritan, if he wanted to, could have gone over and just finished him off. He was already half dead. He could have just put him out of his misery. But what did he do? He had pity on him. He had mercy within him. He, he looked at the individual and said, this is one of God's creations. I need to put my hands on him and care for him, bandage his wounds, give him the care that he needs. I need to put him on my own donkey. I need to travel with him for a little bit, take him to an end and care for him. And not only that, I'm going to help someone to help him. If I'm not there, I'm going to pay for the help to be provided for him. And if I get back and more is needed to reimburse this individual, I'm willing to do that. that that's called going the second, third, and fourth extra mile. And I want to ask you today, who have you had pity on that you've been willing to go the second, third, and fourth mile? See, what it means to have mercy on somebody, it means that it's within your power to overlook them. If you, if you desire to, you can just say, you know what, they need to figure it out themselves. That's not showing mercy. Aren't you glad that God did not tell you? You just need to figure it out for yourself. See, to have mercy on an individual means that you pause, that you take a moment in prayer, and you say, Lord, what do I need to do at this moment? God will always show us, moment by moment, the next step that we need to take. And when we do that, we get to be a blessing. But more than that, the blessing returns to us because we've been faithful and obedient to do what God has said. Then I love how Jesus ends this part of the passage here. The expert of the law, in verse 37, verse 37 says, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus replied, go and do likewise. You know, you and I need to go and do likewise. Maybe we're not going to see somebody that's been beaten and half dead, but we know when someone needs help. We know when we can use our hands. I, I'm telling you, it's so simple to use your hands that sometimes all you can do is make a phone call, send a text message, and you don't know the kind of help that that's going to bring, but you need to use your hands in service to the Lord so that others can come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You know, I, I want to encourage you with these words in, in, in closing. In, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, I, I, I love the book of Galatians. I, I love the way that it speaks to our heart. And it says this in, in verse 9. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Now, I know that Right now, it's, 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 it's a different time. Right now, we're trying to get our feet back underneath us. We're trying to understand what this new normal is going to look like. And, and there's areas in this life that we don't have much of a choice. But you do have a choice in how you represent Jesus Christ. You do have a choice in how you love your neighbor. You do have a choice in how you spend quiet time and prayer time. You do have a choice in how you fellowship with others. And you don't have to be in the physical presence of one another to have fellowship. We can have fellowship through phone calls. Because of technology, we're having fellowship right now through this message. I want to pray for you, and I want to ask you right now. We, we're very familiar with what the, the parable of the Good Samaritan is and what it's about. But are we living it? That, that's what I want to know. Are you and I actually using our helping hands to help those around us? Are we having pity on individuals? Are we showing mercy? You know, with all that's happening, all the unemployment numbers that come out, and all the small businesses that have lost their livelihood, it's time for believers to step up and support those individuals, give a helping hand, do what we can to be a blessing in their life. That's what Jesus would have us to do. You know, this morning, I want to ask you, do you know this Jesus that I've preached about today? Do you know the one that shared the story, the parable of the Good Samaritan? Right where you are, you can have hope right now in your life 
If you do not know Jesus, I want to invite you. Would you invite him into your life? Would you just simply come to him, admit your need for him, because we all need Jesus Christ. See, we're separated because of our sin, but God sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I want you to experience eternal life, and you can do that right here, right now. It's not some future date. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can experience the joy of eternal life right here, right now. But you have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's my prayer for you. As we think about our helping hands, the only way that we can truly have hands that help is to live lives that are pleasing to Jesus Christ. So I want to pray for you right now, right where you are. Would you just humbly bow your heart, bow your head, and allow Jesus to speak to you right now. Where can you be utilized to serve Jesus and to love your neighbor well? Pray with me. Father God, I thank you so much for the way that your living word speaks to our hearts. God, I pray that we would learn this simple lesson from the Good Samaritan. Lord, help us to not be like the priest or the Levite and think about our selfish schedules and our busy lives and the things that we want to do. But Father, would we have the eyes of the Samaritan? Would we be willing to use our hands? Would we be willing to even dip into our own pocket to meet the needs of the one that we have shown mercy, that we have pity for? Father, thank you for the mercy that you have shown us. Lord, thank you for your grace in our life. I pray right now, as you're speaking to our hearts, Father, may we be found faithful. I pray for the ones now that are receiving you, even for the first time, those that are recommitting, rededicating their lives, even now, to be faithful, to walk daily with you. Father, may we be found faithful. May we not grow weary in doing good, because we know at the proper time we will receive a reward, our harvest. You will show us the lives that have been impacted. Because of your grace, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
sent his only son to die for me. Arms spread wide for the whole wide world. His arms spread wide where mine should be. Thank y'all so much for worshiping with us this morning. Let's sing Jesus Loves Me together. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him. y'all again for joining us this week we are saddle up Be my tree. 
treasure in this world fades away in every circumstance that I could ever face 